Hi beautiful souls, welcome back to part three of my Indie Tarot deck collection. And today I thought I would start with the three Marseille decks that were in the photo from the first video. On the left, we have Patrick Valenza's Deviant Moon Triomphe de la Luna. So Deviant Moon Marseille. This one is in English. These two are um, have French titles. The Marshmallow Marseille is from the Wandering Oracle. And I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce the creator's name. Over here on the right, we have Lori LePage's Tarot Days OR, which is available through printerstudio.com. So it does not come with a box. It just comes shrink wrapped. So this will, this lives in a, a tarot bag unless I make a box or have one created. These two are standard size tarot decks and the Marshmallow Marseille is a mini deck. So we'll look at the cards in just a moment. Other than that, um, cardstock is brilliant for all three of them. They all shuffle beautifully and they all stick to um, to Marseille style. So let's have a look at the Deviant Moon one first. <clears throat> so this comes in a tuck box and this one does come with some extra cards which I hope I'll remember to show you. I believe Patrick is creating an Oracle deck to go with his other decks and so you get 10 of those cards with this one. So these are the card backs, really beautiful kind of um, wine burgundy color and a really nice pattern on the back too, so completely reversible. And then the colors here are very uh, antique tea stained, soft, muted colors. And on the side of the box he says, Triomphe de la Luna is the Marseille styled cousin of the Deviant Moon Tarot. Its creation was inspired by antique historical decks and 19th century satirical illustrations. So you'll recognize the Deviant Moon um, artwork in the majors. Very similar and familiar to those of you that have and use the Deviant Moon. So if you're transitioning to Marseille or you're you know curious about this style, this might be a perfect deck for you. This one's also in English and the titles are um, you know easy to read. I find in a lot of Marseille decks the titles are a little challenging to read if you're not familiar with them. And then when you get to the pips, they are very, you know, standard Marseille style. So the aces are more decorative. And here we've got, you know, a much more deviant moon style ace of baton, batons. And then you'll just recognize these as slightly stylized wands. And then when we go back to the court cards, you've got definitely deviant moon courts. So those are the courts for the wands. And there you have your Ace of Cups, and the cups will be really familiar. You just happen to have an eyeball in the middle of the three and things like that. And then the there's your Queen of Cups, Ace of Swords, and then you've got the same kind of style, Marseille style for the swords, just a few little touches here and there to show you it's a Deviant Moon deck. And then when you get to the Queen of Swords, we go back to characters from the asylum. The coins are really pretty. I, I like what he's done with the coins in this uh, deck. Yeah. And then there you have your king of coins. So yeah, that is the Deviant Moon Marseille deck. I do have the one that is the black light version as well too. I don't know if I'm going to save it for a special occasion or just keep it in my collection. So this one is called the classic Triomphe de la Luna. And the other one I believe is called the paradoxical. All right, so I have zoomed in just so you know, this is a smaller deck. This is the Marshmallow Marseille. It comes in side opening magnetic box and the card backs are really pretty. This whole deck is really pretty. Um, shimmery, iridescent card backs. And eventually I may edge this in silver. Um, I did purchase an iridescent white ink to do the sides of one deck and it didn't really work. It did clean them up, but it certainly didn't. Um, I would have to do it many, many times. Anyway, so I may, might edge those in silver. The color is very different on this one. So you've got much brighter colors, pinks, greens, 
yellows. These cards are stuck together just a little bit. I haven't used this deck a lot. I did put them in order though just to show you. So this is probably the most colorful of the majors. So there you have the moon card. And I'll just flip through a few here so you can see. And you'll recognize the Marseille style. The names, of course, are in French. And on this deck, you do see, I believe, the whole name on, on all of the cards. So you can see La Papesse here. All right, uh, of course. Oh, and Death does have its name. Usually Death does not have um, the name on the card. And there you have your Ace of Baton. And then we get to the pips. So very um, familiar pip style for Marseille folks. Here are the courts for the Baton. And there's your Ace of Cups. And Quartz for the cups. And then you have your swords. Quartz for the swords. So this coloration is really kind of pretty. I like the greens and the yellows, and I also love the size of the deck. And there you have your queen and king of pentacles. How small is this deck? Let me show you. Here is the Tarot of Trees. I believe it is exactly the same size as the Tarot of Trees. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, if you're familiar with this deck, it is really small. So, if I had to say it's like three inches by two and a half inches, if that helps you. Approximately. And then the third one. Tarot des Zoar by Laurie LePage. Really pretty card backs. These are not gilded. This deck is super reasonable. I think it was under 30 Canadian dollars through printingstudio.com. And this deck is just a feast for the eyes. Look at this color palette. It is so beautiful. I feel like I'm fanning paint chips here. It's really something. So these are the majors. The names are in French. Some of them are easier to read than others. And she's really put her own little touch. She's, you see her signature and things on different cards. So yeah, really bright and beautiful deck. It just feels um, amazing to hold and to work with. So those are the majors. And then here you've got your Ace of Batons. And you've got your, you'll notice all of the cards, they're all different colors. So you're not looking for a particular background color for, for each suit. So, you know, you've got your golds, your blues, your whites, your reds. So those are the buttons. And then the four quarts for that one are kind of on a, a brownie color. I believe many of the quarts are on this kind of goldy color. There's the Ace of Swords, beautiful. And you see some of these are just, I don't know. I've never seen such an artistic Marseille deck. And then here you have your quartz for swords. So they're all on different colors. There's your Ace of Cups. Yeah, this is such a fun and... I don't know what the word is. It's got a lot of energy for a Marseille deck. You know, it's it's just full of life and sparkle. And then this is my favorite suit. So the pentacles are not all discs. They're different objects. So that's the ace. This one she's signed, Glory LePage 2017. So the two of pentacles. And look at that. We've got fruit. At least it looks like fruit to me. And yeah, just different styles of objects for the pentacles. And a little bit of sacred geometry thrown in there. And then your four quarts 
for the Pentacles. So that is the Tarot Days OR by Lori LePage. And all three decks, I didn't shuffle any of them, shuffle brilliantly. So just, I know I did it in the other video. So you believe me, beautiful card stock. And I skipped the alternate cards, so just let me show you now before we go on to the next deck. For the Triumphi della Luna, you have alternate cards for the star, the devil. This one's really cool for judgment. And the tower, so you have the optional lightning card instead of the tower. And then these are the oracle cards. So I believe he's creating a whole oracle deck, and in this pack you get 10 of them. There is a PDF online that helps to, um, that tells you where he's going with these and what the, what the backstory is for each of these cards. And yeah, so very soon it's possible to have a deviant and an oracle deck in your collection as well too same coloration as the marseille as opposed to the deviant moon tarot so there we go those are my three marseille indie decks okay so moving to the white sage tarot there is a mass market version for this deck now this is the indie version it comes in a cardboard box and this is a two-part box that comes apart really easily so if you are traveling with this one it does need to be in a bag just like the Anna K tarot right it's gonna fall apart in your in your bag um, it does come with a very small little white book and there is a PDF online as well, so you can kind of um, fill in the spaces through the PDF. The mass market version um, has all the information from the PDF and this book together, along with all the corrections, in a small little US Games white book. So um, you're getting something quite different with the two decks. And I did do a video comparing the indie version and the mass market version if you're if you're interested and it will be linked in the description box below. The card backs are the same on both decks. So you have this lovely um, basket weave. The cardstock quality here is a little thin, kind of um, Llewellyn type cardstock is what it feels like. The miners are very pippish. For the wands you have pussy willows and each of the cards has a ribbon wound through it. And the pink ribbon is to indicate the root chakra, the Muladhara chakra. And so you can add another layer to each of the minor cards through the association with the ribbon. So you have Pussy Willows. Here is a court card for the cups. So that's, you have otters for the court cards for the cups. And let me show you. So here is a major card. This is the, the devil. I know I'm showing you way more cards than I said I was going to show you. I'll get back to my routine for the last few. So the cups, that's what they look like. And then the, the pentacles, which is my favorite suit, are sand dollars. And then the swords are swords. I pulled out two major cards, the world, which is really well done, um, with the acorn. And then this is the only card that has the White Sage on it. This is called the White Sage Tarot. And if you order the Indie Virgin, Indie Virgin, I believe you get White Sage in your box and a few other little extras. And I think this minor is really well done. This is the Two of Cups. So the Two of Cups, we have a green ribbon representing Anahat Chakra, the heart chakra, and then the ribbon is you know woven down here. And these ribbons appear on all of the pip cards. And that is your choice whether or not you want to bring that element into your readings. Here is an ace. So this is the ace of cups. And we have a pink ribbon on the ace of cups, which represents the Muladhara chakra, the root chakra. And here we have a heart drawn in the, um, in the latte. And I pulled this court card for you, which these are my favorite courts from the suit of pentacles with the sand dollars and they are elephants. So this is a, it's not an entirely animal based deck. So there's animals for the court cards. There's a few animals in some of the majors and there's no, uh, there are objects from the human world, but there's no people in this deck. Yeah, so that's the White Sage Tarot by Teresa Hutch.
All right, carrying on here with Lily White Tarot. Do you have this one? This is such an amazing tarot, and I want to show you the book first. This is um, a creation by Celia Millsville. She has a few other decks out there. I have her Lenormand deck, and I know there is an out-of-print oracle deck. If you don't have this deck, it is so beautiful, so freaking amazing. And I went out and bought the guidebook. My French is so-so. Um, I can plug my way through it, you know, reading, and there's lots probably of bits that I miss, but it's such a well-written guidebook, and it's printed so beautifully on, the paper is lovely, and um, the binding is fantastic, and I just love all the little details that she includes. Um, here's the Hermit, which is one of my favorite cards. And you get to see it in the lily white and the lily back, black in the guidebook. So if you didn't buy both of the decks, you have a picture of it here. And what I found is that sometimes you can see more in the black than the white and vice versa. So yeah, this is just a great, great guidebook. So you have your keywords here and um, some words if it is reversed. And then you have this long description and then you have some, some shadow information here and on some of the cards she even has more detail um yeah so oh here's one okay so down at the bottom here i didn't know this french word and i looked it up and it means wink <laughs> like you wink your eye so this must have something to do with like um you know an important point or a synopsis or something please tell me what this means um translated into english Anyway, here's an example. So look at the wheel, right? You get a completely different perspective looking at the black than the white card. So anyway, I have the white cards. Okay, so when we get to the minors, when you go to the guidebook, you have, so here is the three up here. So this page is all about the threes and you have the lily white, the lily black, lily white, lily black for all of the threes. And then you have the description um, for all of the threes on the same page. So I just think the the layout is brilliant and I love Some of the things that she has written in the book and then at the back you have some info about her as well, too So yeah Really really nice guidebook and glad that I purchased it. So here are the cards. I guess I should zoom in all right, so what can I say? Uh, I have nothing bad to say about this deck. I love this deck and comes in this two-part um, cardboard box. It has lovely gold paint on the box, gold gilding, the ribbon to take the cards out. My ribbon is fraying. And you also get in the box a little kind of a cheat sheet. So my deck is signed by Celia there. So my deck is 657 out of 1,000. And this little sheet, if you didn't buy the guidebook, comes in English and in French. So one side is French and one side is English. So that will be of help if you don't have the guidebook because some of the cards are a little different. And let me just see if I get the color is, the colors are so gorgeous. So here, this is Temperance. And yeah, I love the colors. I There's so many things about this deck that feel um, just let me fan it out for you like I did the other decks. Um, you do have the copyright down in the bottom. And to tell you the truth, I didn't notice it until today. I've never noticed this copyright. The cards are so full and beautiful that that little copyright in the corner definitely does not take away from, from the deck. Yeah. All right. Let me show you what I pulled. All right. So here's the page of pentacles. You have the earth symbol here. And also up here, this tiny little heart. So on all the pages, you have this tiny little heart, which refers to the heart chakra. The knights, um, I think, have the suns referring to the solar plexus. And there's all these little layers in this deck that make it so absolutely brilliant. Here is the queen of... I know I said I was only going to show one court, but I have to show you another. That's the queen of... Um, I was going to say the Queen of Essence, the Queen of Swords. We've got the ether represented here, the smoke from the incense. Love her feather headdress. 
She looks so beautiful and confident and relaxed in her wisdom and in her experience. And this is the Hermit card. I know I showed you in the book, but now you can see it a little bigger. And we have a woman here inside a tree, inside the womb of the tree. So this looks like a yoni to me, right? So inside. I just think it's absolutely brilliant you can't on the darker cards it's very hard to see the numbers but you can see the number nine here there's no words on any of these cards and there's a larger version you can see that 10 the wheel of fortune is just so brilliant can you tell i love this deck we've got the sun here we've got moon cycles this amazing web all the seasons are represented the court card sorry the minor card that i pulled out is the six of cups so six of water, and this is an image of nesting cups. And if you look at this card as, you know, looking back to your childhood, a bit of reminiscing, it's just, I think this is a brilliant metaphor for the six of cups, having those nested cups. I know I've showed you aces in the past, and what I thought I'd show you here is not all of the suits, but some of the suits show a... Um, what I want to say the minor cards some of them are quite pippish and in the pentacle suit you've got the one at the ace and the ten here and you can see that in the ace the plant is just beginning to grow and in the ten you've got the full you know the full embodiment of the suit and you've got all of these beautiful pentacles growing in this plant so yeah, that is the Lily White Tarot by Celia Melsville, and it is fantastic. Okay, next is Liz Houston's Dream Keeper's Tarot. This is another really great guidebook. There's been a lot of thought that went into this guidebook, companion book as she calls it. It is a hardcover book, and... Just let me show you a couple of things here. If you bought this deck and you are struggling with the images, please, please go back to the guidebook because she has done a brilliant job of explaining her artwork and what, why she's done what she's done and why she's chosen what she's chosen. And I have not read the description for every single card, but the ones I have read make total sense and I understand what, why she's done what she's done. This is a divine feminine deck. So the idea with this deck is that it is a healing deck for the sacred feminine, both in both for those of us who are in a female incarnation as well as those who are in a male body this time around. Okay, and then when we get to the minors, we have an equal amount of detail for all of the cards. So this book is a really, really good read. And then the court cards are at the end. And she calls them court mentors. So the information is a little bit less for the court mentors. You're not going right down to the bottom of the page. But ample information. And she's made some really beautiful choices. Some of this comes from her pre-existing artwork. And some of it was created for the deck. And at the back of the book... She has a list of all of the artwork and you can see whether it was created specifically for the deck or whether she has re reworked some of her existing artwork. And there's a photo of her. And yeah, and then there's this other little bit here. So she has a summary for every single card in the deck. So here's the fool, the playful spirit in search of experience. And then over here, Nine of Swords, depression and overwhelming difficulties which lead to despair. So this is a really nice um, little summary here. If you were learning, even if you were just learning the tarot, this is not really a deck that I would recommend for a beginner, but this book is so well done that, you know, you could definitely use this um, at, from a beginner standpoint. Alrighty, so the cards themselves come in a one of the paper in a paper tuck box. And these are the beautiful card backs. They are not reversible. So this little bit here that looks a bit like a spade, this is the bottom of the card. And they are standard size tarot cards. 
lovely cardstock for shuffling and they are matte they feel the lamination feels it's a it's a really nice playing card not shiny at all um, and then I'm going to turn them over and you can see that this palette of colors is blue definitely blue and generally speaking they are not bright cards the numbers are in a border the titles are in a border at the bottom there is an ethereal quality to this deck it for me, it's a deck that I have not worked a lot with and I'm going to need to take time to get to know it. And it wants to be, uh, it wants to be understood. And I have associations with a uh, much of the, um, I'm just looking at this one here, looking at the marigolds. I'm assuming they're marigolds. Um, and I just, I appreciate the little details that she has put, put into the art. I did back this deck on Kickstarter, and um, I'm looking forward to, to working with it. Here is the Creatrix, so the Magician card. Focused flow and creative energy in order to manifest on the physical plane. And I love this card. It's almost, it's, I can see the energy, the movement. Um, it's tr just a beautiful card. Here's another major, and this is the Sun card. I don't know if you can see, but in the Sun here, there is another face, there is another body, and in the guidebook, she talks about this dance between the physical manifestation of our body and the dance with the soul. And it's so well written. It's really, really beautiful. And I think it's odd that I decided to choose these two cards today because there is a deep connection between what is being created here and um, what is coming into balance and being realized in this card. This is the Knight of Pentacles and another really well done card in my opinion. He's standing on a rock face here. The lower part of his body is a similar color to the rock showing his lack of movement, his solidity, and then the upper part, right? The gold matches the gold of the pentacle itself. And yeah, I just, it's just clever, really, really clever. Here's the Ace of Swords, which was, is not original artwork for this deck. So she's repurposed in her, uh, one of her paintings and did a really really good job I love that this woman is walking away with purpose has the sword in her hand and we've got the water below the clouds above and it just has that brilliant ace energy here's the three of wands another great card I like that she's holding one of the wands in this deck uh, that really appeals to me and then here's the you know traditional ship that's in this card. Some of these cards are very Rider Waite Smith and others are not. So that's where the guidebook will really help out. She also included this little kind of three part uh, keyword pamphlet or maybe it's four. Yeah, it's four pages. So you have the majors on one side and then you have the minors. So a single kind of list for each of the minor suits. So another really brilliant indie deck, The Dreamkeeper's Tarot by Liz Houston. Okay, let's take a look at the Arcana Tarot playing cards. I am really excited about this deck. I think this will be a deck that is going to be in my handbag all the time. I absolutely love the majors and the fact that it is um, a playing card size and has that playing card quality will make it definitely a, a go-to deck for me. It's a side opening deck so you open up the flap on the side and it's got this beautiful uh, blue foil. So many details on this box to, um, to look at. So I'm going to need to put this in a protective bag because I don't want the box to get destroyed. These are the card backs and they are not reversible. The design on the majors is has so much energy. 
passion. And even though it's a black and white deck, you can really feel what's going on in each of the images. If you take a moment, take some time to look at the faces and um, I really, really love this deck. And if you haven't seen a full walkthrough of it, go look for one. I might even do one myself. So yeah, full tarot deck, you've got the majors. And then you have your 52 cards, regular playing deck, plus an extra court card for each one. So if you wanted to, you could pull out one of the court cards for each of the suits. And then this could be a regular deck of playing cards. The aces are illustrated, but then the pips are not. And on the card, if you forget what the tarot association is, you've got the symbol here. So the spades are the swords. And so you have those cards, two through ten, and then you have the four court cards. So you could take out the page, and then you would have your, your full deck of cards. So your jacks or your knights. Yeah, and your diamonds are the pentacles. And then the clubs have the, the branch on them here. So you've got, you can see the branch for the wands. Love this one. And then the hearts is the cups. And then I just pulled out four cards to highlight here. Here is the king of clubs or the king of wands. And he's just got so much going on here. Looks so laid back sitting in his throne, but you can tell this guy has it all together. Or at least all of the fiery elements he has together. And look at the passion in this lover's card. Whoa, that is a kiss. That is a real kiss. And then I've got two aces I just pulled out here. Here's the pentacles ace. And so much has been captured in the detail of this black and white drawing. Like, have a look here, like, through the wall in the garden and in the foreground as well. And even within the, the shape of the ace, the pentacle itself. So you've got this diamond in the background, and then you've got this woven pentagram here at the front. Here's the ace of hearts. It's got so much detail as well, too. Love the lily pads, the lilies down at the bottom. And you can see the water coming out of the cup here. The heart is in the background. And then you have this amazing bird in full wingspan. So these are the Major Arcana playing cards by Dead on Paper. So you, they have lots of other decks as well too. And I'm planning on ordering some more decks from, from them. Yeah. Let's just pull a card just for fun. What do we got? Ooh. Queen of Pentacles. Next we have the Ophidia Rosa Tarot by Layla and Olive. The creator's name is uh, Nicole Rallis. This is a botanical tarot deck. Two-part box, nice quality. Does not come with a little white book. What you have instead is this piece of paper, which we've seen in other decks as well too. So let me turn that over. You have this much information for the majors. So a line, a line and a half for each of the majors. And then on the inside, you have a quarter page for each of the, of the minors. It does not go into detail about the botanical information. <clears throat> the card backs are not reversible. You've got the head because you have the head and the tail of the skin. This is a beautiful, beautiful card stock. And I think what I'm going to do once I finish this video is I'm going to take out my favorite card stocks of favorite decks and just do a little comparison between, um, between them and yeah, the card stock quality because I'm actually kind of curious now that I've made this video and I know I've said beautiful card stock, beautiful card stock and repeated myself, but I do want to kind of take a look at uh, the difference and Hopefully I can share that with you. This deck has that lovely matte gold edging on the side. 
and you can see you know the color is not solid because of the colorings on the cards okay let's have a look at the cards themselves you can see the fronts are tea stained there are colors on the cards reds and yellows and blues and greens but they're very muted and they beautifully kind of blend in with the background this is one of the most uh, brilliantly brightly illustrated cards there are some human elements in this deck and there are a lot of other natural elements like uh, snakes and toadstools and butterflies, moths, things like that. There's a few things that I wanted to point out in this deck and I really should do a full review of, of this deck. There are crystals in some of the cards and I have gone through all the cards a couple of times and was kind of hoping that crystals were only in the suit of wands, but that's not the case. They do appear in other other suits. And similarly, I was wondering, you know, if the candles only appear in, uh, you would assume candles would be fire and they would be in the suit of wands, but the candles appear in multiple suits as well too. So there's not an association, there's not an elemental so association as like crystals with pentacles and candles with wands things like that here's an example of a card that has quite a few elements on it so we have human hands here you can actually i think that's a sleeve um, with the botanical tattoo perhaps on the hand and then we have you know the candles here extending from from the fingertips so there's a lot going on in these cards and I kind of wish there was more consistency as far as those elements go. Here we have candles with cups. Here we have candles with cups. But I know there are candles that appear in wands cards as well too. And then another thing that I was kind of hoping that we could have moons on mostly with cup cards. We have moons on some of the major cards as well as multiple minor cards. And there doesn't seem to be... a um, a pattern or a consistency to which cards have moons other than that it, it usually makes sense why there are moons or a moon, moon cycles on certain cards this card appears in two uh, forms in the deck so here it is as the world card and we have a this I love this card by the way is a beautiful um, completed twig wreath and we have lots of different um, plants different botanical um, species here the web representing the interconnectedness of, of all and this card actually is duplicated I think it's in the ten of wands and that it's not quite complete and so the twig is open and the flowers I think appear over on the top side so it'd be really nice to have more information in the description so we could draw these kind of connections and understand where the artist was coming from and then I'll just show you one more card this is the hanged man so we have the three flowers that have been um, so there's a rope that's been tied on the end of a flower and then around this twig and this twig is not attached that we can see to anything it's just suspended in midair so yeah so that is the Aphidia Rosa Tarot by Layla and Olive the last deck that I'm going to look at in this series is the Naked Heart Tarot by Jillian Wilde, and I know this is a favorite of a lot of people. Jillian did a really brilliant job with this deck. This comes in quite a large two-part two box. It has the elemental symbols on the side. It comes apart easily. And just know that if you do have any decks where you're still where you're struggling to get the box apart, in my experience, it does ease up over time. I know I made a comment with the Sasser Ibido that mine comes apart really easily now. This is the enormous little white book that comes with it. We'll have a look at that in a moment. And then the cards. These are such beautiful cards. Here's your fool card here with the um, unicorn on it. These cards are not edged and the backs of the cards are a project in themselves. 
In the guidebook, Nicole talks about the details of the backs of these cards and she has information of how to use these the backs of the cards as a crystal grid. So when you set up your cards to do a reading, you can place your crystals and she tells which which crystals she recommends, placing them at which points to kind of set up the energy and prepare for your reading. And so this is a really nice feature of the deck. There's also quite a bit of crystal information within the guidebook. So if you do like to add crystals to your tarot readings, she has some really um, good information there as well too. This is matte cardstock, standard, uh, standard size. Again, a really nice quality um, quite nice quality paper. Here's your fool, which I just uh, I showed you previously. And there's no copyright marks on these cards. I know I have mentioned that, and you, there's nothing hidden on the back either. All right, so the cards themselves, you'll notice they have lots of white space. I know some people like busier cards with lots of artwork and lots of details to look at. This deck does not have that. It gives you space to create associations between the cards to use direction and movement and facings and things like that. It also gives you space for thought. This is an animal based deck. Of course there are human elements like cups and things like that. And you'll find on many of the cards there are astrological and elemental symbols. And if you're not familiar with the astrological, the elemental, or the energy behind the crystals, Jillian does address that in the guidebook. It is really, it's really well written. So let's have a look at the guidebook, which must have been a labor of love. It is uh, almost 300 pages, so it is just chock full of information. So it starts with her naked heart story, the creation of the deck, which is always, you know, it's really important to know the creator's backstory and where they're coming from. It gives a different level of appreciation for the deck and the artwork for sure. She has a lot of information about working with the deck. If Whether you are experienced or a new reader, you'll really get a, a good feel for that. And then I just wanted to skip ahead here. There's quite a bit of information on the elements, so that will help for sure. And then here she draws connections between the court cards. This is a really interesting graphic that she's included. And the part that I wanted to show you, I know I was talking about the backs of the cards and about the crystal grid. Here are the instructions for setting up your crystal grid uh, to prepare the cards for your reading. And this is a really unique feature of this deck. And then for the majors, you have a lot of information for each of the cards. So here, for example, is the High Priestess. So you have the image of the card and then description and a message. And then over here we have a chart and this comes up for all of the cards. So she explains all of the symbols on the cards. And if there's additional information, it's included at that point as well too. And then for the minors, there is a little bit less information. I think it's just a two page spread. So here's the three of wands. There's a description of what is in the picture and then the message. And if there's additional meanings or reversed information, then that comes after. So yeah, so there's this um, full page for each of the minor cards. And then, and the, the book is divided. So there's a black page between each of the suits. So it's really easy to reference. And then at the back of the book, there are some spreads. So if you are interested in spreads, there is a, there's a, quite a few spreads to refer to at the back. This deck comes with an extra card. This is the Naked Heart card. Number 22 in the Major Arcana. 
Here's one of my favorite miners, the Two of Wands. Look at these colors, They're just so beautiful. Just So to see a whole spread laid out on the table is really quite stunning. Here's one of my favorite majors, the Hermit. And beautiful Child of Swords. And here's one more minor. I think this is a great Five of Pentacles with the broken crystal and the broken strand of pearls. So that is the Naked Heart Tarot by Jillian Wild. This concludes the walkthrough of my current indie tarot deck collection and I'm presently just getting ready here to record my indie oracle deck collection so you can look forward to that coming up soon. I really appreciate your comments and thank you for subscribing and following me on other social media platforms. It's, it's really nice to stay in touch with like-minded people and students and and so forth. So let's just wind up here. I'm going to pull one card just to, um, to wind up this, this video. And I'm kind of glad I left this deck for last. It's a, it's a pretty special collection of artwork. All right, so our final message for today is Mother of Wands. You may be busy nurturing your passion as you are already in the development stages of growth. You can accomplish anything you put your mind and energy to. The Mother of Wands is the shaman of energy. The Mother of Wands is asking you to get in touch with how your energy resides within and without. She is asking you to move past energetic blocks and release energetic patterns that no longer serve you so you can raise your vibration and be closely aligned with your spiritual truth. What is stopping you from pursuing your passion? And then you can see on the card, the astrological sign is Aries. So she's included that right here. And then at the top, we have the elemental signs of fire and water. And I hope you've had an opportunity to look at the previous two videos as well. Stay well, my friends. Namaste.